If you want to kill a proposed policy in Washington, one of the most devious ways to do it is with a poison pill. As a metaphor, the poison pill is relatively straightforward. You simply force something into a bill that is so politically toxic, it kills the whole thing. Or at least that's what you try to do. But if you are this year's minority party in the House, and yes, that still means the Republicans, uh, then you've got a whole new take on the poison pill tactic. You've come a long way poison. This year's Republican lawmakers have come up with the poison sex pill or the poison perv pill, or the world's most cynical poison pill, depending on how you think about it. They keep coming up with ways to add the word pedophile, or Viagra, or rapist to bills that have precisely nothing to do with any of those things. They add those things to bills so it looks like Democrats are voting in favor of pedophiles or Viagra or rapists, when in fact they are voting for things like better school lunches. Classy, right? Exhibit A is health reform. Republicans sent up 147 amendments last spring intended to sabotage the final bill, amendments that Democrats would have to vote down one after another to get to the final vote on health reform. Among those 147 amendments was a real poison pill, an amendment to prohibit coverage of erectile dysfunction drugs for child molesters, an amendment that had nothing to do with health care or health reform but everything to do with politics. Democrats voted the amendment down so they could get to health reform. Then come campaign time. Hello, Sharon Engel campaign ad. Reed actually voted to use taxpayer dollars to pay for Viagra for convicted child molesters and sex offenders. What else could you ever need to know? This has been the year of the pervy poison pill. Uh, in May, House Republicans attached one to a so-called cash for caulkers bill. You might remember the aim of that one was to weatherize homes so that people inside them stay more comfortable and save energy. Also, the workers who apply the caulk earn some cash, which means stimulating the economy. Remember jobs, jobs, jobs? But then Republicans developed a poison pill specifically for this awkwardly named bill. They added a no cash for caulkers money for child molesters provision to the legislation. So if you vote for cash for caulkers, you're voting for molestation. Actually, you're not. But if you squint, we might convince someone of that in a low budget campaign ad some year. But maybe you said that. Maybe. Republicans this year also added a pervy poison pill to the bill called the America Competes Act. That was legislation to fund science and technology research, a bill, in other words, to create really, really, really good jobs, jobs, jobs. By the time Republicans got done with that one, a vote for the America Competes Act had also become a vote for paying the salaries specifically of federal workers who had been officially disciplined for violations regarding the viewing, downloading, or exchanging of pornography, including child pornography, on a federal computer or while performing official government duties. Democratic Congressman Bart Gordon took his own righteous straw poll right on the House floor on that one. But everybody, everybody raise your hand that's for pornography. Come on, raise your hand. Nobody? Nobody is for pornography? Well, I'm, I'm shocked. So I don't guess we need this little bitty provision that means nothing that's going to gut the entire bill. It's the, this is an embarrassment. And if you vote for required. this, you should be embarrassed. See, one minute you think you're voting for technology jobs, the next you're saying yes or no to firing up the adult sites at your government gig, and specifically for paying the federal worker salaries of people who do that and got caught and busted. <laughs> this week, then, Republicans tried to block the Healthy Hunger-Free Kids Act. This is a bill designed to help feed more kids at school, make those meals cheaper for families, and make the meals more nutritious. It's been championed by Michelle Obama, the first lady. The bill is about kids. One poison pill amendment later, what's it about? Sex offenders. You were voting for school lunches, Democrats, but now Republicans have tried to make it so that a vote for school lunches is a vote for pedophilia. Congressman John Klein of Minnesota, the top Republican on the House Education and Labor Committee, authoring an amendment to try to make a vote for the bill, a vote for funding sex offenders who lie on employment background checks. His statement in protest of the school lunches bill, quote, I offered a modest and entirely non-controversial amendment to improve the bill by protecting children in communities. Yeah, you know what? The bill was about school lunches, dude, and we have you to thank for the weird and creepy total non sequitur. Congressman Klein, everybody. The only silver lining in this totally disgusting cloud was that this time it did not work. House Democrats decided that Mr. Klein's amendment would be voted on separately. The school lunches bill passed today without him being able to attach his creep fest to it. And the bill, without Klein's creep fest, 
is now on its way to President Obama. So enjoy those salad bars, School Kids of America. And remember, you almost got a super disgusting poison pill instead, thanks to House Republicans.